Toe flow putter, face balance putter, what actually are they and how do they work for you as the golfer? Today we're going to do a bit of research, a bit of blind testing on how these putters actually work using Sam Putt Lab and just to see if they are actually doing what the companies tell us they are supposed to be doing for us as golfers. Don't forget if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing hit that subscribe button. If you like this video give us a thumbs up um, but for now let's go and hit some putts and see what these putters are doing for us. So I've got you involved because you're going to be our blind tester. Okay. So you have no idea what we're doing today. I've just uh, asked you to hit some putts. Correct. I spend most of my adult life in a confused state, so this will be no different. Absolutely spot on. So we have James Urquhart as well, who's going to be heading up all the Sam Putt Lab stuff. But we've got three putters that we want Lester to hit today, haven't we? We do. Uh, Newport. Yeah. Scotty Cameron. Phantom X6. Yes. And we've also got the Delmar. Right, so we're going to hit some putts. You and I are going to hit some putts, even though we know what's going on. Exactly. Um, we'll get less than hit first, then you and me will have a go as well with all three putters, and then we'll look at some of the numbers that we're going to get. Perfect. If I came into the pro shop and I asked you, give me a bit of information on this putter, who is it suited for? Okay. What would you explain to them based on the information that we've been told? Okay, so I used to sell quite a lot of putters years and years ago. And what I was told and what I was led to believe from, from the internet, from coaching manuals, etc., that as it's face balanced, which obviously means that the face is pointing directly to the sky, it would suit someone who was making a very square to square stroke because the putter is almost stabilizing and staying on that line without right. any rotation. Okay. That's what I was led to believe. So that putter is not going to open up on the way back and it's not going to rotate more on the way through. It shouldn't because from what I believed in the past that because the face was very much balanced the weights evenly distributed around the whole of the head it should remain square, square, to, square. to square. If then the next day I came into your pro shop and I gave you that putter, yeah. and I said, just tell me a little bit about this one. Is this one suited for me? Who is it suited for? Okay, so that's toe hang, so the weight you'll notice is in the, very much in the toe of the putter, um, with the face almost facing at me. Yeah. So, again, what I led to believe that if I was making very much in to square to in stroke, almost rotating through like a door, yeah. then that putter would be moving on that line with the actual club face almost rotating through the stroke to square itself up. So the first putter then is for someone that's very much square to square and this yeah. one is very much open and closed door method. Correct. So information that we've looked at on YouTube from other putting experts, should we say, are saying that when you get a toe hang putter or something with a little bit of slant on it, like a Newport or a Newport 2, as you pull on that putter, as you pull away with that putter, you actually get the toe wanting to close down on the way back. Because of the weight of the putter and how it's balanced, it's actually pulling the toe in. So almost reverse of what, let's say, Scotty Cameron would say with more toe flow, so more opening and closing of door, you're actually getting the door to close even more on the way back. And they would put this type of putter in the hands of someone that needs a bit more opening on the way through. So somebody that tends to pull putts 
would need a putter that is a little bit more toe hang because it will open up a little bit more as you pull on that putter again on the way through, it opens the face up, enabling to keep that club a little bit squarer. So where does it sit with you then, James? Yeah, so I think it's gonna be a really interesting test because for me personally, a face balance putter is meant to keep the blade square. However, with a face balance putter, when I've used them previously in the past, I do find that I tend to pull putts. Um, with a toe hang putter, I tend to miss putts to the right, if anything, and I do feel like it slows my toe flow down. For, for me personally, that's the feeling yeah. that I get. And if we look at the theory behind toe flow putters and face balance putters, that wouldn't really make sense. The theory. The theory. From certain people. But if you think about what I just said earlier, it would make complete sense. It would make because complete sense, Because as you pull yeah. on that putter, that face wants to open up on a toe hang putter. Exactly right. Which is what you're, exactly what you're saying. And I think where it becomes a little bit complicated is people have different feelings, different thought processes. Um, and I think quite importantly as well, physically, everyone is in a different position at address, a different posture. So if I'm quite upright and I'm using a face balance putter, maybe I'm going to react differently to someone who gets along well with a face balance putter, like Padre Carrington, who's more over the ball. So I may react differently to, the, to how that putter weight is distributed or where the shaft is in the neck. Um, and then exactly the same with a toe hang. So I think the theory can change. Well, I think on the it's time now to look at these results and see what we're all doing. Absolutely. Which putter is opening up the most? It should be the Delmar, yeah. then it should be the, the Newport, and then it should lastly be the number six Phantom. Which one is opening up the most on the way back? For Leicester, the Phantom XX is opening up the most. So the one that shouldn't open the most and should stay square back on square back, square through, is opening up the most. Indeed. Followed by what? Followed by the Delmar. The one that should open up the should most. Open up the most. Yeah. Yeah. Followed by the Newport, which basically didn't Shh. open at all. It didn't open at all. So what we're seeing, or what they're saying on the tin, should we say, for this, these clubs, yeah. is not the case for Leicester. Not the case for Leicester, no. Completely different and random. Is that what you kind of expected? No. No. You thought it was going to be a bit more what it says on the tin. I did, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, because that's what you've that's been led to believe. That's what led to believe, and um, that's what, how I've been educated in that particular subject. So what about you then, James? Where are you sat on this? So uh, most opening up for me was the Newport, which is the complete opposite to Leicester. Okay, yeah. Um, then the second most opening up by a hair was the Delmar. Okay. Um, a 1.7 open. Yeah. Um, and then the Phantom X6 1.6 open. So basically the same with the square to square and the most. So the one with the flow. most toe flow and the one that's the most face balanced are doing the same action on the way back. For me, they're doing the same. And then the Newport is rotating more. Yeah. Me then. What about me? Daniel. So uh, you're by the book, shall we say? Uh, the, the most rotation for you is the Delmar. Okay. Um, then the Newport, and then the Phantom X6. And is it a massive jump between, let's say, the Newport to the Phantom, or is it tiny amounts? It's, it's reasonably negligible. Is it? For, for all of us, really. Is it? I would say that uh, the greatest um, difference in rotation between all of us is Leicester. And um, I think Leicester will say himself it's probably not all the putter. <laughs> As a retailer, someone who has been selling putters, and i got to say, you are very good at selling putters. Thank you. All right. Um, as someone that is that would give off this spiel, how do you feel now? I feel that you should always question and do your own research on various things in golf, because over the years I've learnt that there's a lot of myths uh, there's a lot of theory which is not always the case it being true. But you've just been doing some research yourself since I've told you what we're actually doing. Yeah. And you've seen, and we're not going to name the companies, but no. you've seen companies that have written down stuff on their web pages yep. or in history of their web pages saying that, that there's what, what you know and what I know, as yep. in what we get told or what we read, is 
they're they're backing that up with words on a bit of paper. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. There's quite a variation in different companies and different experts and different people whose opinions on what's actually happening and what mm. should be happening. And it seems to to me that it's quite a muddled area. Yeah. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any rights and wrongs. Um, it, a lot of it is small tests or their own theories. Um, but there's a lot of contradictory stuff out there, more than I would have ever imagined. So what about then on the rotation through the putt? I mean, we've talked about the backswing there. What about as we come through the putt? Is that saying the same for all of us? Are we rotating as much back on the way backwards as we are coming through? Or is it changing a bit? Yeah, it's much of a muchness. So <clears throat> total rotation from the beginning of the downswing through to um, the follow through, so yeah. through to the end of the stroke. Um, if we start with Leicester again, uh, he's got most rotation with the Phantom, which was the square to square one, which we said um, was his most rotation on the way back. So that's staying consistent. So that's yeah. staying consistent. Then the Del Mar and the Newport are exactly the same. Right, and then yourself? Um, so myself, so I've got most rotation with the Newport, which is yeah. what, which is exactly the same. Um, then the Phantom, then the Del Mar. So the Del Mar actually has the least rotation for me in total. No, so it's, it? it's very, very random. Um, and then with you, it's just exactly the same. There was very, very, um, small amounts of difference between all three putters. You were right. almost, you were almost putting exactly the same stroke on each putter, but it was ordered in the way from, um, the toe hang Delmar was getting the most rotation just and then the square to square phantom was getting the least rotation so what can we actually take from that video i think listening to what the company say about these products and then what actually happens you've got three different people there um, of decent quality golfers that come out with three completely different results so almost bucking the trend of what could or should happen with these putters. The only person was myself that actually followed a trend, but it was such a small amount that really it was, it was tiny, tiny numbers that we're talking about here that really would make no difference. I could probably put all three of those putters in the bag and they would start to perform quite nicely for me. But I think the message from this is that whichever putter that you like the look of, the next step is to make sure you have a decent putter fitting because that to me is the most important factor, to put you into a category of, you should be in this type of putter, you should be in that type of putter. I think we've kind of blown that out of the water a little bit with this little test. The key there is to make sure you go for your fitting when you choose a putter that you like the look of. Let me know though, put your comments down below. I'd like to hear what you think about putters, what companies tell you about putters, and whether you actually believe what they're saying. I'd like to hear that in the comments. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel and you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button. But if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and we'll look forward to catching up with you again soon.